Do I need much more of an intro? Really? It's a giant elephant with a factory on its back and a pig angel with wings. What more do I really need to say about this? What more can I really do? Ooh. Bruno Kafala. Well, well, well. It's good to see an old friend. Hi everyone, welcome to another Broken Meeple review, and today I've got the weirdest, I've got the game with the award for the weirdest box cover I've ever seen. And to be fair, I've, I've seen like games like Abyss with just the face. Now, I, I think an elephant with angel pigs and a steam factory on top kind of takes the cake. And that's certainly the setting that Imaginarium, the new game from Bruder Kafala and... Oh, can I even begin to pronounce this? Florian Cyrille? Cer I honestly cannot pronounce this. I will just put it up on the screen for you. Much easier. I do apologise. French is not my strongest language. But, like I say, the fact that it had Bruno Cafala's name on it certainly intrigued me to this. As well as the box cover. I mean, let's face it, that, that's going to get your attention on the shelf. But I've played a lot of games by Bruno Kafala, you know, he does a lot of games I like. Abyss, one that I've been touting the praises for lately, I did the expansion review recently. You know, he's just singing well with me. Not all the games hit, you know, some are misses, but, you know, it certainly gets me intrigued to have a look. And apart from that, I knew nothing about this game. Really knew nothing about this. It was just complete unknown. I didn't know anything about the mechanics, I didn't know what it was. All I knew was that it looked gorgeous, sort of. And, you know, it was by Bruno. Pretty much the deal. So what are you doing in Imaginarium? Well, you are running a dream factory, essentially. And you are putting together all these weird machines of various types in order to produce resources, which allow you to turn them into completing projects for victory points. They allow you to get alternative machines that you can combine with each other in order to do lots of different sort of shenanigans, in a sense. And you're basically building an engine, literally, in a sense. And you can recruit, you know, assistance to your cause to give you special powers. But at the end of the day, you're basically building machines, combining them in various ways, collecting resources, and attempting to gain the most victory points. Of course! The crux of this works with this action selection me mechanism where you have six different actions you can use, but they you can only choose two at a time. And because of the way this little clock face is on the board, you have to choose a pair at a time and you're restricted as to which ones you can do and you can't do the same one twice. So you have to try and organize your actions so that they you know, are done in the most efficient way possible. And like I say, you will get recruits, you will disassemble machines, you will combine machines, you will build and repair new machines, you will get money in the form of charcoalium, <laughs> you know, basically coal, and you know, all sorts of little shenanigans. It gave me that kind of essence of Century Spice Road with a bit more meat. Because in Century Spice mode, it's quite a light game, but you're essentially turning cubes into different cubes, and then turning those cubes into different cubes, and turning them into victory points. This has got a similar kind of feel. You know, you're using these machines to produce cubes of, you know, albeit nicer looking cubes, of various different types, but then you'll use those in order to turn to victory points, or, you know, build other machines, and kind of so forth and so forth. So it's like it's got an extra step in that whole Century Spice Road progression, for an extra little bit of meat. And, you know, it is an engine builder at the end of the day. You are producing these engines, they will produce, you will get an efficient engine going, and eventually the game will end when somebody hits more than 20 victory points. Now, the first thing to get into is probably the divisive thing here, the artwork. The artwork, I think, you can't deny that the artwork is gorgeous. This is a beautifully rendered game. It looks the part. You've got these giant little sculptures for, you know, your just pieces that you move for like the first phase of the game. All the artwork on the card looks great. Everything is very well produced in this box. I mean, even they even give you a box to hold all the different cubes and tokens in, in the center of the board. It's not perfect because if you turn this vertical, they will slide out of the inserts inside them, which is a bit of a pain. More of these publishers really need to realize that we do like start stacking games vertically sometimes. In fact, stacking this vertically means I've probably already jostled some of the cubes around, but hey-ho. And, you know, so certainly well produced. 
But the art is not going to appeal to everybody. I warn you of this now. There is some weird art in this. I think it looks great and it fits the theme very well. It's certainly, for an engine builder, sticking true and tested to the theme it's based on. But some people are going to find the art a little bit odd because you've got these weird anthropomorphic like type assistants that some of them look odd you know you've got like a, a tiger with a top hat and a monocle and various other clothing you know it's, it's steampunk mixed with weird animal dreams I guess is the best way to describe it but then you've got some other ones that just look creepy like really creepy you know like nightmare inducingly creepy there's some odd things in this game and even like the crusher which is basically a discard pile for for engines that don't get taken is basically a giant set of teeth that's literally what it is. It is a giant set of teeth, you know, with like really open, really photorealistic. It basically looks like something you would get at the dentist. Like when he shows you, this is what your teeth should look like if you clean your teeth properly. You know, it's certainly not like mine, but it's, it's an odd picture. And some of these other ones are going to divide some people. Whether you think the theme is strong or not, this plays out basically like your, gen you know, like your general engine builder. Get some stuff, Combine it in such a way, make it work efficiently, produce, get the victory points. But you've got a little bit of extra meat in this because of the way the actions are done. That two clock mechanism. The two clock mechanism means that you have to choose a pair of actions, but you can't choose the same one twice. And so you have to balance out which actions you need now, which ones you need later. And a bit like how you do in games like Scythe, for example, you want to try and use both actions as efficiently as possible. You collect the machines off this conveyor belt in a sort of turn order mechanic where you have to pay a certain amount of currency, but the, the more that you're willing to go first in the round and next round um, requires you to pay more than if you're willing to go last. So you've got that little balancing act. Of course, you're looking for specific machines, so therefore you might want to pick that spot anyway, but then somebody else might take the spot before you. Once you've got that, you're building these machines, converting the resources that you've been producing or collecting into what's required to repair the machine and get it working. There's a heavy emphasis on storage you know, efficiency because you've only got four spots on your board to store these things and you quickly start running out of space. You really must plan ahead as to what machines you're going to need, when you're going to dismantle some, because dismantling them gets you a lot of resources you might need, or just straight up victory points. But then you've also got the necessity that you're going to combine some of these machines to make them more efficient. And a machine that, for example, produces one copper you know, on its own, you could combine with another one of its type to produce three copper, a uh, clopper, copper, and you can combine it with a third one to make five or seven copper even. You know, they get exponentially better. And there are some other machines that you can combine in order to make them, you know, feed into each other. So a machine that requires you to convert two crystal into victory points. You might be able to combine it with a machine that produces the two crystal so that they just work independently without you having to find the resources from elsewhere. Um, other than that, you've got a few other machines like attack and defense machines, you know, you... They're, these are probably a little bit of a weak link, I think, in the machines because the defense ones are pretty powerful if you've got the space for them. You know, they will defend against a lot of potential, like, painful stuff that can happen. But the attack ones seem a little bit lackluster. You know, you get them because certain projects want you to have assault and defense machines. But other than that, they're just one-off abilities where you, you just drain people of a couple of resources and take some for yourself. And that's about it. It just happens once. Granted, I imagine that if you could do that every turn, it would be too powerful, but the amount of time it takes you to build these machines, sometimes you don't really feel like the one-off assault is that great, especially if you don't build, time it right and build it when you're not actually gaining or hurting the opponents much. So those were a little bit of a weak link. I find they don't get built as often, but you know, occasionally it's nice to be able to have it like on standby, ready to build when you can time it right. And there certainly is some fore planning in this game. You need to think, right, I need that sort of machine. Oh, these new ones have come out. If I get that, I could combine it with this. And then maybe that will free up a space. I could put this machine in there now and start using that to produce what I need for this. And there's certainly a lot of shenanigans you can do, a lot of combos you can make, and, you know, different paths to victory. The variety in the game is okay. There's a reasonable amount of projects that can dictate you know, what victory paths you go for, but some will synergize with each other better than others. 
The assistants, you only have three out at a time, but you've got a fair amount of them, so they can you know, vary how the game plays. Again, pretty good. I wish there was maybe a bit more variety in the machines, though. You've got the different types, you know, attack, defense, uh, one that's just churn victory points, uh, the transmutation ones, and the uh, production ones, but they kind of rinse and repeat themselves a lot. Like, the production ones pretty much produce the three or four main, like, resources in the game, and it's just a combination of different ones, and that's about it. The transmutation ones are exactly the same, they pretty much just convert a wild into this particular thing, or a wild into that particular thing, or a wild into this particular thing. So there's only so much in the way of like unique style machines. They kind of do the similar things, it's just a case of what resources are you producing and using that you can get in sufficient quantity to use those machines well. Yeah, the all of this together does produce a little bit of variety, but I fear that maybe you'd start wanting an expansion at some point to introduce more variety of the machines. And you could put a lot of different machines in this game, and I reckon it would be really cool to have a bigger deck of machines. Maybe something for the future, but you know, there's enough to keep you going for a little while in the base set anyway. Now the game dictates it will go to two to five players and take 90 minutes. Huh. There's a little bit of a caveat you have to do with that. Firstly, again, enough with the five players. Every time I see a game that says two to five players, I immediately think doesn't play well with five and probably has a weird variant of two. It's a free four player game. And this one's no exception. Two players has got a variant in this and it works all right. I think it's fine. You know, I prefer to play this with three. Four is just about on the cusp of being a bit long though. Five is ridiculously long. Honestly, there is no reason, to be honest, there's very little reason to play this with more than two, really. Or certainly no more than three, because it's not that it's entirely multiplayer solitaire. You've got, like, the ability to block each other on that conveyor track and the tiny little bit of interaction with the assault machines. But other than that, you're kind of doing your own thing. So having four players and five players just seems to be a complete waste of time. Why would you bother? Free, at least you get a little bit of that interaction, you get a little bit more sort of banter with the players and a bit more blockage on that conveyor belt, but the two player variant works fine as well. So I find myself only wanting to play this with two or three. Four and five just too long. And it only says 90 minutes on the box. It doesn't say like 45 to 90, it just says 90. I find that's actually more accurate than you think. Because when you're going through all the different machines, I reckon two players could do this in 60 minutes, but they'd have to know what they were doing. When you're playing this with three and more, it starts creeping up to that 90 minute mark and can go longer with four to five players. If you're playing with new players, if it's your first time playing it, or if you've just got that one slow player who doesn't think about his turn before it gets round. And I know you can say that about any game, but this lends itself to it because you've got all the different machines, you've got to do all the steps of your turn before the next player does theirs. So you've got to Work all your machines and produce them. Then you've got to choose something off the conveyor belt that you already reserved. Then you've got to see if you can do, then you've got to do the two actions. Then you've got to resolve both actions. Then you've got to clean up for the next player. And then they do all their stuff. So you do get a bit of a downtime issue with too many players. For what is supposed to be a 90 minute game, you can be waiting quite a long time before it gets round to your turn. So I really don't advise playing this with more than three players. I think two to three, Decent enough, four to five, forget it, don't, don't even bother. I see no point in doing it. If there's a bit of a negative I have with the game though, it's that it kind of ends a bit, almost too soon. I don't want the game to go longer in terms of time length because 90 minutes is more than enough time you want for this game. I mean, anything more than 90 minutes and it's overstayed, it's welcome. But you keep going until somebody's got 20 victory points. And there have been occasional games where I find that it's gone so fast up to 20 victory points that some players sort of feel like I didn't really get a chance to build what I wanted. I wanted to get this going and that. And those assistants that you can get, they got great abilities. You can have up to three of them, but just having one of them requires a fair bit of effort. And in that time, somebody could have already got started on their engine. If you're trying to get two or three of those, I mean, you spend your whole game getting free assistance before you start doing your engines, you kind of really far behind and somebody might have already just churned a basic engine and got plenty enough victory points for it. And there have been other occasions where somebody just didn't feel like they got all the machines they wanted or maybe the game felt like, 
you know what, I was ready for a bit more to happen. And now it's just ended, like stop. I would have liked maybe a bit of the downtime to have been reduced, you know, maybe less to do on your term, but then have more output from the machines, more output from the engine building itself. Now I'm not talking getting to lengths like Great Western Trail where like you build a machine in like 50, in 60 minutes and you have to play for another two hours. No, you know, have it so that you end the game kind of when the engine is finished, but let me finish the engine. <laughs> you know, let me get that engine finished before you suddenly say the game's ended. So the time balancing is a bit of a weird thing with this game and I can see how that's gonna off put a few people. For me, I'm kind of on the fence with this. I, I like the game. I think it's a decent game, but I think it's fragile. I think that it's not going to appeal to many from the art perspective. I think that maybe some people are going to prefer Century Spice Road and similar other engine building games for being lighter than this one, rather than being a bit too uh, like meaty. I feel that People who are thinking, oh, I could play this with up to five players are going to be disappointed because anything above three or anything above two really is kind of mostly pointless. So it's got, but on top of, on despite all that, it does feel fun to play. It, do, it is very well produced. It does give you a good feeling of building and disassembling machines with that steampunk theme behind it. But it does have those flaws on top. So... I'm on the fence where I want to rate this one. I'm torn between six and seven. You know, I think it's okay, but not perfect. I think though I can go for, I don't know. I think I have to go probably as much as a seven max. Yeah, a seven max, it's, it's decent. It works, but I feel that there's some improvements could be made. I feel that it's not, as perfect as I was like. And, you know, like I say, I still think, you know, I love Bruno Cavallo as a designer. This one probably is, is it gonna sit on the shelf for much longer? Hard to say. I'm gonna keep it for a little bit, but then we'll have to see how much it fades after even more plays with other people, you know, but it hasn't won me over instantly, like say, Abyss did. You know, that one just like, whoa, I want this game and I wanna play it loads and got the expansions. This one I feel needs maybe some revisions or maybe just needs an expansion with some additional bits to streamline it a bit more to make the game last as long as I think it should and of course it is fragile to the analysis paralysis players it could stretch on way too long if you play with anybody who's remotely slow with this so Imaginarium the Dream Factory decent not great though it could have been better I was probably maybe expecting a bit more from this but I enjoy it and I will play it just fine. So, Imaginarium from Bruno Kafala, Bombix, and yep, Bombix Games. So, that's it for me for another review. I'll see you on the next Broken Meeple. For now, doesn't matter what kind of weird and wonderful dreams you're making with this uh, somewhat creepy uh, artwork in here. Still only a game, so uh, wake up eventually. See you next time. Take care.